Sen bir tane oğun tutduk işte. Onu ödür bana de facto ne tutduğun zaçınlar. Singapur'un, olsun ilk sorguluğun, management'un, hiltsin darak, profesör, noyun Michael Frazee oralçı bayna. Good evening. Hello. I was at your lecture, very impressed about this spirit of entrepreneurship, where the most important thing is your personal initiative, the capacity to move yourself towards to your towards to your goal. Please tell us more about personal initiative and why is it so important. Yeah, gladly. Number one is it's self-starting. So nobody tells you what to do. Uh, you do it yourself. Number two is it's proactive. You think about the future and you plan for it. You work for it. Number three, it's overcoming barriers. And because of these three factors, you change your environment rather than the environment Change changes them. you. Mm -hmm. But you can also change because of the environment. That's not, mm -hmm. uh, not impossible. Uh -huh. Why is it important? Important it is because it has been shown that it is related to success as individual, that it is related to success of organizations if they have a de higher degree of initiative culture, mm -hmm. and that it is one of the factors that leads to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, you said about this... Uh, initiative factors, capacity, institutions could be driving you, right? right? Right. And you may work. And if it is a combination of your personal initiative, initiating capacity and the institutional one together, they will have a more, uh, that place will have a more chance for success, right? It does, yeah. And the reason is um, that you're more innovative, typically. You uh, deal more thoughtfully with the problems because you uh, use problems as something that helps you to develop mm -hmm. your ideas mm -hmm. and you are not allowing yourself to sort of fall into the situation I can't do anything anymore here. I see. Yeah? And of course whenever you have it in an organization it also breaks down bureaucracy. Yes. Because bureaucracy means I tell you what to do. Personal initiative means I take the initiative to do something. You said an interesting thing. Problem is either you, it can stop you or it can sharp you, challenge you. It depends on if you have a higher personal initiative uh, capacity, you may take it more as a challenge and to deal with the problems which obviously are part of progress. You yeah. do every day this progress. So now, how can we develop that, if it, it's called mode, how can we develop this mode of looking at the problems like a challenge and to, cr to have more personal initiative, even in hard circumstances? Yeah. Is it possible to develop? Yeah, it is possible to develop. We know that we can change it. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we cannot change it completely, yes. yeah, but we can change it a little bit higher. Yes. And we know that it has positive effects. How can we do that? Uh, let me first explain why we can use challenges as a starting point. Okay. Um, when we have a challenge, we can say, hey, what is this challenge about? We can analyze it, but we often don't really act on it. And what personal initiative does to you is that you really act on it. However, mm -hmm. most likely, you may have even thought before about the challenges, and you made a, made, may have made a plan B already because you anticipated certain kinds of problems. Mm. Yeah? So personal initiative is not only good when you have the challenge, mm. but also in anticipating the challenges. 
and therefore you're better prepared. But at the same time, you will not use a challenge as a discourager. Yeah? So how can you change it? Uh, well, it's of course a big, long program yeah, of, of, of 20, yeah, yeah. 25 Actually, hours. it's not yeah? easy. Yeah. Because many young people, in particular young people, young adolescents, young professionals, go through this phase in your life where you wish you want to have more initiative, right, personally. Right, right. So from that perspective, how yeah. do you see, how can we get that people, that, that person more proactive? Yeah, I mean, what we typically do is we try to sort of teach in every area that is important for, for example, for entrepreneurship or for unemployed people or at the workplace or for your career. We talk about every area where you, how you can actually develop personal initiative in this area. Mm -hmm. And often we start out with something like, how do you develop a goal within personal initiative, uh, mm -hmm. with, a, with a mode of personal initiative, as mm -hmm. you said. So we start a goal by saying, I want to be different from others. It, I'm not going to just look what others are doing, but I want to be self-starting again. Now, it also means, of course, that you're not going to be extremely low in your goal. Yeah? Yes. Because then it's not worth it. Yeah? Uh, so you actually have an aspiration that is high enough. Yeah. Not too high, maybe, but uh, still high enough. And when you have self-starting, uh, the stimuli, you have these aspirations, it doesn't mean that you will have immediately winning everything. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. As a matter of fact, one of the things we always teach is you make a lot of errors, a lot of false entries, a lot of false curves that you take, mm -hmm. a lot of false uh, turns that you take. All of that kind of thing is correct. Mm -hmm. And therefore, personal initiative always implies mm -hmm. I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. But because you may be wrong, mm -hmm. you can anticipate again the problems that might occur. Mm -hmm. You may plan for that. Mm -hmm. But in any case, you will react quickly to the situation and you will then say, how am I able to overcome that barrier? Mm -hmm. And you will be creative because you, we teach creative approaches to in overcome In particular, barriers. after several mistakes and errors, right. you're better to be right. creative. Right. And of course, most people in entrepreneurship make a lot of errors. Yes, no? yes. And I th there were some statistics that almost half of the companies have, uh, I mean, three years or, or each in general. Then it, the more goes, less and less companies go through all this. It, it, exactly because not everybody survives, yeah. right? Uh, interesting, uh, also, you are working as professor at the University of Lundberg. Uh, there is an institute of, uh, for strategic HR management. And yet, you still work for Singapore National University. How come? Okay. How, how, it, uh, <laughs> how it happens? <laughs> well, it happened that I wanted to not give up uh, a professorship in Lüneburg or uh -huh. in Germany. Mm. And so I actually changed within Germany to Lüneburg. And, uh -huh. uh, and the reason was Lüneburg is a very entrepreneurial university, more uh -huh. entrepreneurial than other ones. And so they were very interested what for me to get there. What makes that university uh, so The university uh, rector, the uh, university okay. president, was, uh, is a very entrepreneurial guy. So it, that, uh -huh. that produced it. And they think of themselves as one of the very small universities that are entrepreneurial minded and attract entrepreneurially minded And do students. they have some fund to raise money? There's funds to raise money, there are fun there's lots of social entrepreneurship that is done. Uh -huh. and there are lots of student-led entrepreneurial projects in this university. Hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go there and why they wanted me to come. And there is certainly very much uh, sophisticated, developed R&D programs. I wouldn't fun. say that. No, actually, no. Um, uh, there is lots of stuff that goes on in the area of sustainability. So there, ah. it's a highly sophisticated uh, area of mm -hmm. the university. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, it's not like a technical university or, uh, you know, where there's physics or chemistry mm -hmm. uh, taught. 
where there's lots of, uh, on that level, there's actually less uh, um, entrepreneurship possible. So R&D mm -hmm. is primarily in the area of sustainability. Okay, compared, uh, if you compare National University very of different, Singapore. Very different, very different. Yeah. In which sense? Uh, in the sense that the University of Singapore, of course, is a much bigger university, How is a much students? more established university. Mm. And, uh, and it is an excellent university in pretty much every area you can imagine. So in yes. physics, in biology, yes. in, uh, in technology, etc. Yes. So in that way, of course, uh, it's also a fantastic place to be. Uh -huh. And it's a fantastic place to be in Asia. Uh, in U.S. is, of course, certainly a household name. Yeah. And in particular, when Singapore is becoming the regional financial center, regional innovation center, media center, probably uh, the, the students have a more chance to have a world-class jobs there. Uh, that is one possibility. And of course, they do get jobs relatively easily. Unemployment is very low in Singapore. And what you do as a head of the Department of Management and Organization in that? <laughs> well, uh, I think where Singapore still needs more knowledge is actually things like innovation processes. Mm. I also think that Singapore can do a lot more in terms of the endogenous uh, companies can do a lot more in professionalizing the HR mm -hmm. uh, uh, departments. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, the, of course, the multinationals, they're, they're always very well organized, so there's less need for there. Mm -hmm. But the endogenous uh, companies, I think, need a lot more. Also in terms of leadership, in terms of having a mm -hmm. clear idea of what you'd have to do as a leader. Mm -hmm. That I think is still an enormously important aspect. Of Before the last uh, election, the people were raising their voices about uh, Singapore is becoming very expensive for ordinary Singaporeans. It is becoming a musty expatriate's country, standard different. The sort of voices were there before election, if you remember. What is your take on that now? That's a difficult question. And of course, it's even more difficult to ask an expat <laughs> those kinds of questions. So uh, I would say that actually uh, what Singapore was worried about, and many Singaporeans were worried about, wasn't so much uh, expats in the professional area. They mm -hmm. were worried about that they would go the route of Dubai, mm -hmm. you know, where 90% work, 10% mm -hmm. don't work, and the 10% who work are citizens of Dubai. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of the population, uh, the, and the, the rest yes. is I imports of people yes. who do the work. Yes. And I agree with that. I understand that that is a big problem for Singapore. Uh -huh. It has about 25%, 30% ex, uh, yes. not expats, uh, uh, people from abroad. Uh -huh. Now that's of course the helpers as well as the yes. people who work on the, uh, in, in the factory as mm -hmm. well as the people who are do, doing the construction. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that way, I think they, uh, they are now doing something very smart and that is that they say work has to become uh, better organized. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, also become more mechanized. Mm -hmm. And so at least they don't need so many low-level jobs mm -hmm. from abroad. More service-oriented. Yeah. See, uh, the economy structure in Singapore must be service-oriented. IT, yeah. Yeah. media, yeah. regional hub of media. Yeah, but setting. amazingly much production still. Yeah? Still, huh? Pharmacy production. So oh, there is. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of oil production, everything related to refineries is near there. It's yes, possibly it's in a big Indonesia. regional yeah. oil transportation yeah. Yeah. and yeah. conversion And of course, it's a, it's a big hub yeah, yep. in terms of the... Hub. And does it make your department of management and organization uh, specially focused on particular areas? Uh, I mean, uh, that is difficult to say because we have two, f two tasks to do. Mm -hmm. Number one is, of course, we live in Singapore and so we should be useful for Singapore. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have another task and that is to develop knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And in terms of developing knowledge, we, we have three areas where we are worldwide mm -hmm. leading. One is the area of genetics. Mm -hmm. So we know very much of uh, what is genetically determined in terms of entrepreneurship or in terms of job satisfaction, mm -hmm. life satisfaction, things like that. We also have a large group that looks at well-being at mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a, a smaller group that is sort of the group that I work with on entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which looks at the individual entrepreneur, the micro perspective on entrepreneurship. Indeed, this yeah. lecture today you gave uh, was, I remember interesting facts that one third of entrepreneurships or entrepreneurs uh, looks like statistically they are partner, but genetically they are in that way. Yeah, Two well, third not one not. third of the entrepreneurs, one third of entrepreneurship as a okay. general okay. characteristic. I see. see uh, now let's, uh, let's, go to, let's talk to yeah. the uh, two thirds, yeah. which is not genetic, right. the entrepreneurship right. area. Right. And you said at a certain point that because that, you can still develop that skills. Right? Yeah. How you can do that? Well, I think. Uh, we do it by a combination of thinking about your own company, if we talk to entrepreneurs, or thinking about potential companies, uh, but also founding a company very quickly if you are still a student, for example. And uh, we combine this action orientation with how do you develop a system to actually see yourself doing personal initiative in every area. Yeah? And, um, and that, of course, again, you know, the, 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 the many areas that you have to work in, you know, think of finance. Yeah? Um, so we say, don't wait for any finance. Don't ever wait for finance. Try to bootstrap, meaning get the smallest amount of finance that you can get from your friends, from your family, from the fools, you know, the three Fs of financing. Uh, try to get the smallest amount and start working with that. Don't wait for anything. Once you have started to work, mm -hmm. then you be active and go to the bank and go to, the, uh, um, to, to other potential uh, uh, finance mm -hmm. providers. Yeah? So th this idea is very interesting. Before you run after big money for your idea, right, right. you started even with a smaller prototype exactly. with whatever money you can raise, right. friends, right. families, right. and other people. Yeah. And as soon as this, it, it, it works, then you can work it bigger. Right. right? right. Is the, the and that's a very different way to think of financing than it for example, in some of the finance textbooks, yeah? yes, uh, uh -huh. they would say, you know, write down what you need, yes. you know, and when you need what, and you know, and we do away with all of that. We sort of say, start now. A you know? little bit another question from these three areas where your university focus on is about well-being. Yeah, how do you uh, explain that well-being? Again, well-being, well of course, also has a genetic component, yes. and yes. we know that too. Um, even job satisfaction has a genetic component. Yes. Um, but, um, but we also know that well-being actually is, uh, that the, there's, uh, there are factors of well-being that are related to how negative is your environment. Okay, so if you have a boss who is disgusting to you or who, is sort of all the time not civil enough with you. It's like small yes. incivilities. Yes. Yeah? Uh, you will actually reduce your work. You will be less happy. Productivity uh, lower. Productivity will be lower. Uh, but the major point is even if you keep up productivity, you will be more, more sick happy. and uh, more likely yes. uh, negative. And of course, you leave the job once you have a chance. Yeah, yeah? Yes. And so uh, that is one aspect, of course, of well-being. That is drives the ill-being, yes. Ill the negative yes. part. Yeah? There's another uh, place that drives the positive part, mm -hmm. and that is to succeed. Yeah? So if you succeed in something, uh, if you do something well, then it's actually driving the positive side. 
And what we found, which was fascinating for us, was uh, we looked, for example, at passion for entrepreneurship. And we found that it wasn't passion that was driving the effort. It was actually the effort that was driving the passion. But the effort had to be successful. Mm -hmm. yeah? Effort driving passion, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, successful effort driving yes. passion. Yeah? Yeah. So it comes with, so I always say start something and then your appetite comes along anyhow. Uh -huh. you know. Very interesting. Usually we used to think passion. After passion you start effort. Right, right. Or you say vice versa. Right, right. It's vice versa. Yeah. It's also true that you may not start anything if you have no passion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But the passion continues on, you know, it becomes passion bigger. Passion is depending on the goal or passion depending on your genetics? Well, p p passion may be genetic, but it may also be related to, you know, that you saw somebody who you liked and yes. you saw that this guy was successful and you want to be like that person. You know, yes. the passion comes from different areas. Well, that's yeah. also, yeah. we talk now, start talk about the factors yeah. uh, on that like uh, impact on the entrepreneurship, yeah. the spirit. Yeah. yeah. Is entrepreneurship is a national characteristic or it is group characteristic or personal? What do you? Okay, uh, it must be everything, okay? Uh, now, obviously, you know that I'm more interested often in the individual yes. part, but uh, there must be something that is a national part as well. Uh -huh. And you see differences, huge differences between nations. Yeah? Between 2% entrepreneurship in a, in a country Just to 35%, 40% entrepreneurship. An amazing example, Israelis. Israelis are very high for a highly developed country. Yes. Yeah? And it's yet, it True. just formed a few years ago, 50 years or yeah. so, 60. Yeah. And yet they do such a performance. They yeah. are you know, playing an important role in the most developed, sophisticated part of That's sciences. True. Yeah. But so is, for example, uh, Sweden and Finland. True. So it's really amazing that often relatively small countries were able to, Switzerland as well, were able to drive it, new ideas. Is it... Uh, what 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 is that move makes these countries moving like this? Uh, small zeal or what? It's uh, actually I think to some extent. I mean, there are some data that show that um, those countries, in general, now that uh, th that may be a differentiation that is important here, but in general, that those countries that are more positive oriented, more um, also more collective oriented, so mm -hmm. that people work with each other easily, yeah? that those countries are slightly better in, in uh, entrepreneurship. It is, uh, I agree. But uh, there is a differentiation, of course. One thing that drives entrepreneurship is also necessity. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, there's yes. nothing that drives entrepreneurship more than yes, that necessity. you don't have any job. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think, uh, this nation is about now. Now we understand more and more that we cannot be dependent on two minerals. Yeah. That's it, full stop, and whatever I think, we have. And I think the, ch the current economic crisis is a uh, big chance to because you can now say, hey, we need to do something. Yeah? We need to do something as individuals rather than wait until the big guys come and, and do everything for us. What particularly you think Mongolia could be entrepreneurial oriented uh, uh, industry I, or businesses? Quite frankly, it's very hard to say which area will be the one that you will succeed. It's mm -hmm. very hard to say. You, in in yeah. any nation you cannot predict very much. I so. wish we could and I think I work on an idea about that but I don't think that it's, uh, it's well enough developed uh, at this point. So I think you know, there's, for example, some areas where the clock industry d developed in Germany and Switzerland. Yeah? Uh, the watch. old one, uh -huh. yeah? Uh -huh. yeah, the watch industry, uh -huh. I'm sorry, yeah, uh -huh. the watch industry. Uh, but also the clock industry, yes. both. Yeah, in a way. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, the, you know, you, you have to ask the question, so what are the cultural conditions that lead to such uh, 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 different an industry? Differences, yeah? yes, uh -huh. But uh, my general approach is that you also have to try out things, also as a nation. Mm. 
you should not say we are only going to focus on this one and we are not going to focus on that. That mm. does not work very mm. well. I think what you have to do is you have to also try things out, see what doesn't work, support those things that work better, mm -hmm. but also support those things that are experiments. Uh, finally, uh, some question about your, yourself, about your family. Your, where, where is it and um, who are they? <laughs> well, my, my, uh, my wife is uh, from Britain and uh, my children are British and German. Okay. And um, one lives in Singapore, another one lives in Germany, <laughs> and they're both going to go to a university now. Please tell us, uh, what makes you to stay as a professor of university? You could do many entrepreneurships, you know, many, many, to be engaged in many businesses. Why are you staying there? Uh, it's such a nice job. It's the most fantastic job you can have. I mean, in my view. Okay. Right? Because obviously, uh, I'm not just after knowledge. I'm also after knowledge that can be used. Okay? But at the same time, I also find it fascinating that I'm allowed to really dig deep, you know, instead of just doing superficial stuff in terms of knowledge development. And I really esteem very, very highly that I can find out things and that I can prove certain kinds of things beyond doubt, I find that extremely uh, uh, satisfying. Are they your students or you were a mentor for or uh, people who have done uh, a lot of achievements because they have gone through this uh, training or school or I think uh, I've been. Uh, I I think I've been very good in actually mentoring people who continued on in research, and in doing also applied kind of research. So in that way, yeah, I think that was very meaningful as well for me. I've produced many professors in the world. <laughs> okay, and uh, finally, as we say, a person is lucky if he's doing the job he likes a lot. Looks like you are that person. That is a fantastic job. Yeah, Congratulations. Really yeah. And thank you yeah. very much for coming to this yeah. program and sharing your insights with many Mongolians today. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here. It's great to be thank here. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. The fact that the people who are in Singapore and the people management are in the world are in the world. Professor. Michael Frazier, it's all. If we're